Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for the fourth and final webinar in our special teleworking during COVID-19 series, Collaborative Technologies for Telework. In our first three webinars, we discussed some high-level best practices for employers and employees and reviewed some key workplace issues and considerations. While those webinars focused on the people and management side of things, this is more geared towards the technology that supports those services. My name is Russell McDermott and I'm the Program Director for CT Rides. I'm joined today by Bernie O'Donnell, who's one of the lead IT telecom specialists at Partner Consulting. I'd like to also spotlight Drew Kalizowski, who's not on the call today, but works with me on the con consultations that we provide for IT and telecom services. A few housekeeping items. All participants will be muted for the webinar. If you have any questions, please type them in the Q&A tab as they come up and we'll answer, answer them during the Q&A portion at the end of the webinar. This and all of our previous webinars in the series will be available on our website, ctrides.com. And lastly, we try to customize all of our webinars to make sure that they're helpful for you. So any feedback you have would be greatly appreciated. The team and I review all of the comments you provide and try to incorporate those recommendations in any future presentations. You'll receive a copy of this survey both in your browser at the end of the webinar and via email. CT Rides is a program of the Connecticut Department of Transportation and we help employees find better commutes than driving alone to work. We also provide expert advice and assistance to employers like many of you to develop on-site transportation programs, which include telework solutions. We've been providing these services since the mid 90s and we cover all aspects of telework implementations from policy development to trade-in. But today we're going to be focusing specifically on the IT and telecom consultation services that we provide. In today's webinar, we're going to look at some of the high level IT and telecom challenges we're all having to deal with, specifically, identifying our technology requirements and how those may have changed in the past few weeks as we've transitioned to a full-time remote basis. We're going to highlight how we conduct our technology assessment, which is one of the core services we offer, and review some of the topics we've received a lot of inquiries about in the past few weeks, such as online security, which is a growing concern for many of our partners. Now, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Bernie O'Donnell. Bernie? Thank you very much, Russell, and thank you all for joining us today. Um, we're all uh, suddenly plunged into telework where some of us may have tried it before, uh, some of us may have wanted to try it, and uh, all of a sudden we're, we're uh, in with both feet, and uh, we're all uh, learning a lot, learning what works well, and as much as possible trying to help others, to help our peers and our friends, uh, some of whom may have never done this before, uh, or maybe trying different uh, technologies to see what works best for them. And that's what we'll be discussing here today. Um, our environment has typically been employer provided, um, standardized among all employ employees. Most employers uh, spend a considerable amount of time uh, in determining what products will work products and services when they are employer provided. A lot of the interact communications that we've had has been in person, uh, very interactive meetings face to face, uh, certainly phone calls and, and emails and, and chat and messaging um, occur, but we, we've always had that in person option and uh, have become very accustomed to that. Um, the connectivity we've required again has been employer provided uh, typically connecting business locations and uh, mobility has come along in that over the years depending on what your job requirements are uh, the employers have typ typically provided those mobility solutions we're moving now to a, a, a partial 
uh, mode of, of employer provided solutions as well as in many cases employee provided solutions. Um, cloud technology uh, fortunately for us provides a, a very immediate availability of information from anywhere. If we are at a work location uh, or if we're on the road, if we're in field service, if we're at home, if we're at a client location, the information is available by connecting to those cloud services and uh, available to multiple parties. Our work hours are shifting uh, for many of us. Uh, the opportunity to do that due to working at home uh, is a great benefit. If something comes up uh, in the middle of the day, the child care or, or something else of a personal nature, often you can make the time up later and uh, uh, when you have some quiet time and really focus on the work and not, not have these uh, sometimes are out of your control. Availability of people isn't necessarily as instantaneous as in an office environment or a work environment, and we may have to adjust uh, to less immediate availability. But as we use the tools that are available to us, as we get to use them, we find out that really does work pretty well. The uh, devices we use, be it a, a computer, an iPad, a smartphone, um, give us a lot of mobility these days. Uh, whatever location we may happen to be, and good connectivity at high speeds, even uh, in addition to into wired internet service that many of us might have in our homes, the mobile service that we have through our, our cell phones and, and iPads or mobile service through a, a, a hotspot connected to a laptop uh, can give us a great level of, of connectivity, even supporting video conferencing or high-speed file transfer. So our collaboration practices prior to COVID-19 and the environment we're in now, as I mentioned, were you know, largely dependent on physical meetings and one-on-one -on -one and drop-in meetings with, with everybody pretty much available at the same time during the same work hours. And these days we, we may have some core work hours, but there is a little more flexibility on that. Um, the, the downside of that physical presence uh, was that in some cases, if someone couldn't make a meeting or was out, they didn't get to participate. The meetings weren't recorded. The, uh, the information might get transcribed to them. They might be brought up to date at a later time, but uh, it, it would sometimes cause meetings to be delayed or, or eliminate certain people. Uh, the tools that we'd use were in place. Again, occasionally there'd be shortages. There wasn't a projector for every employee or a whiteboard for every employee. And uh, many of us from time to time have gone through that situation of, okay, who has the projector? Or who has the projector that actually works well? So uh, uh, the standardized software and tools that we've used generally worked well for us. And uh, we generally had local tech support uh, to, to support those products for us. Our new virtual environment allows us that, that time shifting, as I mentioned, and uh, meetings can be easily recorded. The, uh, the, the folks who can't participate in a, at a meeting might be able to watch a recording of it later on in, in, a, in a sense of time shifting. And we can, we can engage with, with people right there in terms of our computer screens. It's a, you sit in a large meeting room, that might have 20 or 30 people and distractions it's it can be easy to become disengaged or distracted uh, but when you're sitting there video conferencing with someone on a on a computer it's very engaging the, probably the only downside of that as compared to the in-person meetings that i've particularly noticed is nobody brings donuts to you when you're in that that tele teleworking environment or if if you do have that benefit then uh, that that's great for you um, the, the screen sharing and whiteboarding and, and presence indicators that show if people are available are tremendous in terms of allowing you uh, to conduct work 
in, in a remote environment uh, versus what you could do in, a, in an office or, or a workplace where everyone comes together. The, um, it, it takes a little bit of getting used to, especially in terms of people learning to use some of these tools. Uh, but as people come up to speed on them and use them, uh, they really are tremendous and very user friendly. Some of the popular cloud-based applications uh, uh, bring an awful lot of capability. And these, these are typically offered in a, a SaaS, SaaS or software as a service model. And rather than having to install software on your computers and go through that process, uh, these, these tools are available online and there's many others beyond what's on the screen. And you don't have to worry worry about it, do you have the up-to-date version? You pay a subscription service, you pay as you go, uh, typically on a monthly basis or a yearly basis with, with some kind of a discount. And that, that allows you to scale up and down if all of a sudden you wanna add 100 more people uh, to a telework environment, you don't have to get their computers and, and load software on them. Uh, they can access this through these cloud services and, and they're very, uh, very user friendly in terms of getting up and running. And the compatibility across these products is, is tremendous these days. Uh, some of them have integration even to competitors' products and the portability of, of documents and work products. If you're, if you're using Google G Suite or you're using Office 365, uh, the spreadsheets and, and PowerPoints and documents may have a couple of minor uh, formatting differences between them, but by and large, you can save them in universal formats that can be exchanged across all these tools. Um, tools like Slack offer a, a little bit different mode of collaboration where it, rather than a, an email, typical email type structure, uh, things are organized in channels that might be around particular projects. And these projects can, uh, uh, due to this structure, it keeps people on the, these project teams focused on uh, the particular matter at hand or the particular topic that you're collaborating about. So in terms of sizing up your technology needs, certainly you need to define your requirements up front. If you start just looking at products out there, you, you can go round and round and round and you need to narrow down to what your real needs are. And your needs may not necessarily be what you have today, but most likely the products and tools you have today fill some or most of your needs. And if you can bring those forward and use those tools that you have, that's great. But this is a, also an opportunity to reach for more and maybe make some improvements in how you work. If you review the, the current technologies that are available, uh, there are a lot of freemium offerings out there where you can use things for free, determine if you like them, uh, and then move to a paid tier of service or multiple paid tiers of service and try things. Test, test them with friends and your peer workers and review them and share your observations. And it's, it's the best way to get your feet wet on some of these things and determine what's gonna work for you over the long term. Because of that structure, where it's easy in, easy out, subscription or, or free services, uh, if you use something for a month or two and it doesn't work out, you may wanna look at some other options and uh, see what works best. In determining gaps, once you find what you want, you use what you've got, you wanna see what's missing. Um, maybe you do need to upgrade and, and pay for something that previously you used as a free service. And you really need to assess what are your needs versus things that are nice to have. And as you go along working with these products, you'll hear from friends and peers about different features that might be beneficial and you can assess what really works for all of you. So in defining your requirements, your, your existing hardware that you have uh, may or may not suffice, uh, you know, be it a laptop, a desktop, or a, a phone, or iPad, whatever hardware you might be using. Uh, if it's very old, uh, there could be issues with it. There may not be enough storage on it. There may not be enough memory for it to run certain applications. 
Uh, if it's within a couple of years old, it's probably fine. Uh, but again, it, it largely depends on the applications that you run. The applications that could be of concern are less so the cloud applications that we've talked about or the software as a service, more the custom business applications that you might have for a, a financial or an HR system. And uh, uh, these systems may have custom requirements that, that your employer can work with you on to determine what, what works best given the, the hardware that you have or whether upgrades might be required to run those applications. For collaboration, most of the tools you're going to use are cloud-based uh, or, or provided as a service, um, voice services, messaging, email, chat, uh, video, whiteboarding, and they, you may find yourself using common platforms for your collaboration, but you may also find, especially as you work through clients and other customers and suppliers, that you may have to learn multiple platforms, especially in the area of collaboration. Fortunately, a lot of them do the same things. The controls might be in a couple of different places, but the, the really, uh, it, it's rare that you can use one collaboration platform and find that that does everything for you. 80% of the time, maybe, but I think you'll find yourself using other products and uh, becoming familiar with them as you as you work with them in in collaboration sessions with uh, with other people on file sharing um, a lot of that is going to be dictated by your employer policies there could be issues with, with sharing that information or custody of information and uh, one big issue is file retention uh, guidelines how long things need to be kept where they need to be stored and backups. There, there need to be backups of files and you need to assure that the policies and procedures are in place uh, to keep files backed up. So in reviewing current technology and, and applications, um, the, the office tools that are, are of common use like Word or Excel or, or PowerPoint or uh, database tools uh, are fairly commonly available and, and you can get those through a cloud service or through uh, software loaded onto your your particular uh, hardware that you're using the the financial systems or hr systems or business applications you, you might have a an engineering platform or a, a customer management or an education platform that's that's unique and your employer may have some policies or guidelines toward accessibility with those. Um, some of those systems may not be available 24 seven like other office tools. And uh, there could be some, some access requirements around security and uh, how you use and access those systems that are a little bit different. So it's important to have those discussions and develop policies that are necessary around those. In, uh, in terms of the, the current technology that you have, uh, as much as possible, it's nice to use what you've got. Uh, you may need to upgrade certain things, but the benefits of using what you've got is it's faster to implement. And most of us have, in the, the current environment have found that we just had to use what we've got with, with very little notice. And uh, we may have plans to upgrade certain things at a future date, but the, uh, the devices that we've got were when the music stopped, what we had to use. Um, certainly it saves money versus buying new technology and it minimizes the learning curve. So if at all possible, try to use what you've got. Uh, if you find there are shortcomings uh, down the road, you, you can tweak, tweak and make some changes. So in determining gaps, uh, you need to determine what what isn't covered, and when you when you have a list of things that you're trying to do uh, th that aren't covered, you may want to review them a second time and try to determine are they really all essential. Um, it, it possibly there could be some new things or new ways of working that could eliminate some that you're finding to be difficult. Uh, 
it, you may want to replicate what you've been doing all along in a in an office or a work environment in a, as in your telework environment but uh, consider trying some new things and doing things a little bit different and as you use the free trials um, there are some that you, that you use to, to get a toe in the water and find that free is good on an ongoing basis but Sometimes you get what you pay for, and it might be worth saying, let's look at the other tiers of service that are available. And because most of them are on a fairly easy in, easy out, month to month basis, uh, say, well, well, we'll try a service with a few employees for a couple of months, see how it works. And uh, if it doesn't work out, we'll, we'll go back to the, uh, to the free model. Now, in protecting your online presence, um, some of you may have private information, certainly employee information that needs to be protected, um, customer or client data, uh, information about your business strategies or future plans, and certainly financial information. So it's important to protect your online presence, and we'll, we'll talk about that here in a moment. Any any change that occurs, like the change in moving toward a uh, telework environment involves some risk. And if we were moving to a telework environment and we had six or eight months to plan moving into it, there'd be risk there. And in, what's just happened to all of us here with the COVID-19 situation is we've been moved into this environment very quickly, many of us without having any prior telework experience. So that risk can be fairly high. And in any situation that's as widespread as this, there's always some bad actors that will try to take advantage of a crisis uh, while people are anxious or, or pressured and uh, feeling rushed to do certain things. So uh, there's that risk out there again of, of malicious intent uh, trying to uh, get information or obtain login credentials from you. And we have to be careful. Um, you may have read about a lot of the ransomware that especially uh, some local governments seem to have been uh, victims of the past year or two. And, and largely, the, the defense against that is ha having your information backed up because these ransomware events are typically uh, something that comes across as a result of someone clicking on a link or, or logging in and someone take, take a malicious person taking over their computer and locking out their data and that proliferating across a network and doing the same to other computers on that network. If those people have their data backed up separately, there really isn't a threat versus if, if the data really is completely gone. And unfortunately, there have been many uh, I've heard of schools, I've heard of local governments, and I'm sure there have been some other businesses uh, who are paying the ransoms. And of course, by paying the ransoms, that just uh, helps this proliferate and causes people to attempt it all the more. So having backups of your information is critical. You certainly want to look out for any of the, the typical fraudulent uh, websites or, or products or emails uh, that try to rope people into buying fraudulent products or, or giving to a non-existent charity and looking for the, uh, the spelling errors and links or emails or something that doesn't look quite right. 99% uh, of the time, uh, the, the folks that, that uh, perpetrate some of these things uh, don't seem to have a great knack for spelling. And if something doesn't look quite right, you want to be very careful with it. Even emails from someone you think you'd know, possibly a supervisor or a coworker or a client, uh, may not actually be from them. So if there's something unusual about it, it's always a great policy to, uh, to check. You may have heard about Zoom bombing where, where uh, bad actors again have come in and uh, interrupted meetings. And I think the, the, the news media certainly has sensationalized it in terms of uh, making it sound more of a, a, a hacker type situation where someone has, has broken into this meeting or, or conference. And I believe nine times out of 10, 
uh, they've gotten into it by using the normal credentials. And uh, if, if those credentials are available in a, a public forum, on a website, on a Facebook page, uh, someone with, with bad intent can harvest those and see when the date and time of the meeting is and come in and, and make trouble. Um, I believe also, and some of them have been proven to be uh, insider jobs where whether it's a student or a coworker or somebody uh, thinking they're going to have a little bit of fun or, or something worse, uh, have come in and disrupted meetings or video conferences or webinars uh, by getting the, the credentials from someone else who they know who is, is part of that meeting. And uh, it does happen. Uh, and with Zoom in particular, uh, Zoom, Zoom is great that in that it's very user friendly. It's free. You have someone tell you about Zoom. You can find it, download, be up in a meeting in less than 60 seconds and be reasonably comfortable with it. But because of that, there's a tendency not to necessarily dig in deeper and learn the features. And it's important to do that. It's imper important to look in and see how to lock people out or mute people so that you can conduct a meeting and whoever's hosting the meeting really does have control. Again, Zoom has paid tiers of service that offer particular feature features and they offer a webinar service that's specifically targeted toward webinars that give levels of control there. But even with the free offering, it's important to test with someone and literally go through every single icon and feature option so that you really understand the product and the controls that are in it. Um, making sure your software is up to date is important. And this this applies not only to Zoom, which we've heard so much about, um, but other products as well who, who could all be vic victims of this. Um, but making sure your software is up to date is important because very often uh, software updates contain security updates. And as things are found out where there are vulnerabilities in software, these updates will, will typically help resolve problems uh, and prevent you from having any any kind of difficulties with someone disrupting a meeting. So in terms of resolving problems um, for a home office setup, um, investing in a headset, especially with a, a noise canceling microphone if possible is a is a great thing. Uh, the audio that's on a computer, uh, the microphone and the built-in speakers uh, can do in a pinch, but they pick pick up every little bit of background noise, and they're they're not the best quality. And you don't have to spend a lot to get a good headset. I mean, you can spend a fair amount. AirPods are great; they're a little pricey. Some of the headsets that are out there are a little bit pricey, but are, are very good. But you can get a a headset for a reasonable cost that that will do the job for you. Um, on, on the video calls, you especially want to be aware of, of previewing your image. Uh, if, you, if you're in a situation where there's a light behind you, it may reduce the features on your face. And the purpose of a, of a video conference is, is that people can see your facial cues and see how you're reacting to what they're saying. And if you're backlit, they may not be able to pick up on that as well as if your lighting is in front of you. And again, not overdone but in front of you enough that they can people can see you well and uh, most most software um, or, or computers have uh, the ability to preview that you should do that look at what's in the background the cameras on the computers typically have a fairly wide field of view and uh, will pick up anything in the room and if people see things moving or something in the background that distracts them uh, they're going to pick up on that and it's going to take away from the, the purpose of your, your collaboration and your conference. You don't want political stickers in the background. You don't want anything controversial that's uh, going to cause people to take their attention away from the message you're trying to convey uh, with your uh, gestures and your, your voice and what you're telling them. For conference calls, uh, great to start early, to have people check in early. They can resolve issues in terms of that, you know, their microphones are muted or, 
or something isn't working quite right before the meeting starts. So that if you, you start a meeting at 10 o'clock, you can actually start conducting business at 10 o'clock. Um, you can test your microphone and your speakers and your camera typically before you ever dial in or connect to a conference. And that, that's a good habit to get into. The, um, I'm sorry, excuse me. Okay. And looking beyond COVID-19, you want to implement solutions that will grow with your company. The, the telework model has a lot of long-term benefits for us. Uh, if, if we ever get in a situation like COVID-19 again, where we unexpectedly spur the moment need to work from home, you don't want a situation where you have to go back to your workplace to get hardware or, or products to do your job. You really want, you want to be ready to go at a moment's notice. Um, if, if there's a snowstorm or a weather event, uh, if, if you have an employee who's slightly ill or someone who uh, has a sick child and has childcare uh, commitments that they have to deal with, they may still be able to work from home to some degree and they may want to. And uh, an, employee, an employee recovering from a medical procedure that may have them uh, recovering for, for weeks or a month, uh, but they may not yet be mobile, may want to get their brain engaged in some work and, and telework can do this for them. Uh, if your work location is inaccessible due to a, a gas leak or a, an infrastructure problem, a bridge being out, a flood, uh, telework can, can come through for you. And also just providing uh, weekend and holiday access when a building's closed. If if you had something that you forgot, you're going on vacation Monday and you don't want to have to deal with work things once you go on vacation. If you could pop in, you know, via telework on the weekend and take care of something, uh, it's a great thing to have on an ongoing basis basis for for business continuity and, and disaster recovery. And in developing a video culture, it. it, it to some degree, you may need to force that in the beginning and you may need to force it on yourself. Uh, many people feel that, that an audio conference works just as well as a video conference and sometimes an audio conference is fine, but there, there's a balance. It isn't necessarily that you have to use video conferencing 100% of the time, but the level of engagement is extremely high and there's quite a difference. You can accomplish more in less time. Uh, people tend not to be as distracted. People tend not to be checking emails or doing other things while they're on a video call. They get engaged, they conduct their business, and the call tends to be shorter uh, as a result of that. Russell, back to you. Thanks, Bernie. I think you had a lot of great information. I really like how you went into depth about what the gap analysis process looks like. Um, you know, one of the things I hope that everyone got from this presentation is that the the needs of every company is going to be different when you when you conduct that assessment, and uh, it's really designed to really provide you with solutions that are that are going to be a custom fit for your company. The two resources that we've been highlighting on our webinar series is the state's COVID-19 website. Again, this has the latest information on Connecticut's response to the pan pandemic. And our website, ctrides.com, which has a lot of great information on all of our telework services, including what we discussed today.